Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else. Uh, for, today's, for today's episode, we're covering Big Star, the, uh, the cult favorite Memphis group from uh, the 1970s who didn't achieve much commercial success at the time, but managed to become influential in the years to come. Uh, a lot of the tragic band story, but it ultimately ended up in a somewhat positive way, depending on how you look at it. But um, four albums we have. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to apologize for my, on behalf of myself to the audience for the no doubt elementary musical thing you're doubtless going to hear in this video. So that being said, let us uh, move on. Uh, further, uh, first experience with Big Star. So I listened to the Femme Fatale cover and I hated it. That's a good song. Uh, it's a good song by the Velvet Underground. Great song. Not a good big star song. Okay. Whatever you say. The mid takes already started. <laughs> um, in terms of my familiarity, I'd um, I'd heard like their quote unquote hits, which I guess they don't have any, but like the the famous songs, you know. But I hadn't heard any of their albums all the way through. Yeah, I, um, I first heard them when I was in high school because um. From the Rolling Stone greatest albums, but I saw three, three of those. I listened to them. I didn't really get it. I wasn't really that into like. Besides Neil Young, I didn't really like seventies rock that much when I was uh, in high school. But um, then a couple of years after I graduated, I saw the Netflix documentary about them. And I thought it was really cool. It made me check out their stuff, and I fell in love. And uh, yeah, you know the. The original run, I love Alex Tilton and Chris Bell. Great songwriting, excellent musicianship, uh, great singing, good songs, good music. I like them. I can start this time. Sounds um, like a plan. You better have the reunion at the bottom, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah my number four is In Space. Um, yeah, it was just very kind of not good for me like I just I didn't enjoy the experience very much it just felt very kind of um like I didn't remember much of it um I did the opener from the opener to the ending like I just kind of my eyes glazed over you could say um but you know Lady Sweet I thought was a pretty good song but I, di I really didn't like the opener Doni and my least favorite song was probably Love Revolution just because it was like laughably bad. Um, but I don't know, it just, it, it feels like an album that doesn't know whether it's trying to be a new big star album in the sense of just doing like, the same thing or like uh, going in like a completely different direction. So it almost tries to do both. And I feel like it kind of fails in that regard. Um, I'm not gonna listen to it again, uh, two stars. I'd say their Love Revolution song makes Lenny Kravitz's Love Revolution song sound listenable. I haven't heard that one. I'll, I'll listen afterwards and compare. You don't want to. Yeah, I have In Space at the bottom, too. I don't, I don't have a lot to say about this. Someone said, sum this album up in one word, why? You know, <laughs> I don't know. There's just like, Lady Sweet, I guess, was like the best song on the album. Even I, I barely remember how that sounds. Even, um, I don't know. There's some cool ideas in the first half where they do some kind of like sort of power poppy stuff, and like it's performed well and competently done. But it's like there's just the songs. There's just not much there in the songwriting at all. The lyrics are just really bland as hell. Dumb, uh, usual like power pop. Power pop, it's like most cliche. It's like your hair looks pretty, your eyes remind you of the sun, that sort of trash. Um, let's see. Mine exclusively is a cover of the Olympics. Listen to the original. Or even better yet, Alex Tilden did a version with Teenage Fan Club with uh, Jody Stevens on drums. That version has much more enthusiasm and is done better than the version on here. Um, Aria Largo, I guess, the cool little classical cover by a Baroque composer named George uh, Moffat or whatever. It's a cool little moment, you know. It's the only interesting moment, musically, on this record, to be perfectly honest. 
it's just so out of nowhere. Maybe it would have been better if they did more like unexpected stuff like that. And I'm like, you get all these dumb songs that feel like they were just written, like 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 they were just made up on the spot, like Love Revolution, and Do You Want to Make It, you know, standard like twelve bar blues style songs about fucking pretty much, you know. It's just like not very, I don't know. It's boring, forgettable. I was gonna give this a three out of generosity, but considering how much I forgot about it, I'm gonna give it two point five out of five. Probably the worst album I've had to listen to in this series so far. Yeah, I agree. Alrighty, these hooligans right here thought that I wasn't gonna put in space at the bottom. I'm not an idiot. This record sucks. Like, just simply put, what the hell is this album? If you want to go back and make a studio record after all of this time off, that's reasonable. But why are you making this album that has genuinely no purposes to exist? Why are you beefing up your sound? You're a power pop band that's barely good at that. Why are you trying to go heavier and trying to be this, like, harder rocking act? And you don't even stay consistent with it. I think Doni is a solid track, and I really like Lady Sweet, but I really like Lady Sweet because it sounds exactly like an Elliot Smith song. Like, it's just a bad Elliot Smith song. And then it gets to Love Revolution. And oh my God, this song is terrible. Who thought Big Star doing funk was a good idea? Why are they going for any sort of funk? It's horrible. It's just, oh my God. And from everything going on from there, it's just not good. Nothing is good. Namely on stuff like a whole new thing and hung up for the summer, it's just exemplifying everything I don't like about power pop as a whole. It's already a genre that I'm not very high on. I think that there are some solid tracks at the beginning, but even the band seems to acknowledge how bad of a misstep this was because it's not even on streaming. I give it two stars only because of those better songs, but way to just totally ruin your legacy as one of these high, cold power pop acts that just never got the appreciation. And I'm not even a fan to begin with. This is just, I can't imagine how disappointing this would have been. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not happy <laughs> that I had to listen to this. It's, yeah, me neither. But honestly, I don't, it, it's so forgettable that nobody even, I think everyone just immediately ignored it completely or forgot about it when it came out. Cause like, it didn't make enough of an impact to ruin any legacy, honestly. It's not that, it's, it's too boring to even accomplish that. All right, let's move on to the classic run. Yeah, my number three is um, their second album, Radio City. Um, I think my issue with this one is mainly that it just kind of feels like the first one in style, kind of again. Um, I think the songs are good, though. So I can't fault it too much. Um, you know, September Girls was probably the first Big Star song I ever heard. So, you know, got to give it credit for that. But yeah, overall, the best song on the album, I think kind of the, the popular consensus is, is 100% right there. Um, just a great song front to back. Um, but yeah, I think just my issue with this just comes down to the fact that I just feel like stylistically, they're kind of doing the first one again, which it's a it's a good style. I just maybe wish I had something a little bit um a little bit more, but you know, it's it's still good. So I'll give it a three and a half out of five. Okay. Now we're getting into the classic run. And honestly, from here on the list can be interchangeable for me, uh, depending on how I feel a certain week. I love these I don't know, these albums, um for certain music, especially with Big Star, especially, um, I don't know, it gains repeated listening to me because there's always something interesting going on, whether it be the music or the lyrics or whatever, or the performances or whatever. It's just very compelling music. And I, the more I listen to it over the years, the more, the more uh, stuff I find that appeals to me. But um, uh, with, for five, with five stars, um, my number three is number one record which is um, a great album, a uh, very strong debut, some real classic songs on here. It's the only one of the four that has Chris Bell on it. And uh, Chris Bell basically created the, uh, 
the trademark sound for them. And it set the blueprint for what they would be known for afterwards, even though he left after this album. But um, yeah, the songs are fantastic. Um, Feel is a really good opener. Love that guitar riff. The production on this whole record is just immaculate, really crisp. You can hear every single note, clear as a bell. Sounds really nice if you have a really good pair of headphones. Excellent performances. Ballad of El Goodo is a magnificent song. Really sums up the mission statement. Don't nod your head, Adrian. You don't know what you're talking about. And uh, the drumming, the performance, I want to say Jody Stevens' drumming is just magnificent. He plays like a warrior, and he really elevates these songs and gives them so much strength and power. He really transforms these songs into a really epic experience. And uh, the Ballad of El Goodo is just really fantastic. It builds up great momentum. It's a very well-written song. Um, In the Street is next. Probably their most famous song right now since it's um, the theme song for the, that 70s show. Um, good rocking song. Love it. Very infectious. 13 is just one of the most achingly beautiful songs I've ever heard. It really captures the almost like painful feeling of like innocence, you know. You look back when you were 13 years old and like at the time you thought it was lame, but like the older I get, the more I wish I could like go back to those moments. It was like the one moment in my life where you're, you're truly innocent. And you know, the song just really captures that. Just it's so beautiful, even though it's like very bittersweet at the same time. It's like a dagger in my heart, you know, but it's a great song. Uh, Don't lie to me. Good. I love the up tempo stuff on here um the india song is kind of dumb but it's dumb in a charming way to me kind of like um the bassist andy hummel wrote and sang it and it's kind of like a jody mitchell vibe i love how like the song's about wanting to go to india and then he just says like the stuff he wants to do is like drink gin and play a piano <laughs> but for some reason uh you know someone should have told him you know you can do that at home too but uh, whatever. It's cooler when you're in India, I guess. Uh, when my baby's beside me, good tune. Um, second side is more acoustic and soft, more heavy on the ballads, but I, I still love the songs too. My life is right is just really good. Um, give me another chance is uh, really pretty. Try again, nice tune. I love watch the sunrise. Really pretty acoustic song. And then it ends with like a sweet little instrumental called ST-106, which is probably, um, I, I don't know what, what the significance of that title is, probably the name of like, the tape leader or something. But a uh, really good record, really puts me in a good mood. There's just so much confidence. It's a very upbeat record. They weren't jaded yet by uh, what they would come to face in their personal lives after this recording. It's a damn shame it didn't do better commercially. But um, if if music could be measured by the amount of confidence that's transferred from what you listen to to the person listening to them, um, number one record is a solid A plus for me. Five out of five. Oh, if we already talked about number one record. You're going to be higher on these albums for me, but god damn, that is a take right there. What? I love music. <laughs> What's the crime in that? No. Uh. Alrighty, uh, number three for me, which I'm pretty sure is going to be steps number one, is Radio City. I agree with Aiden. This is a weird record, in my opinion. On first listen, I'm going to be brutally honest. I didn't think any of these songs were great. I thought it was pretty fine all throughout. They had it at 2.5 stars. Just didn't care at all. However, I did re-listen today. I actually re-listened to all three of their first records. And it really helped propel the band for me into being a band that I would honestly probably say that I dislike to a band that I just do not care about. <laughs> um, the first two tracks on the record, they're just exceptional. And then there was a lull coming back, like what will happen on most of their records that you'll see, but Back of the Back of a Car is also fantastic. And I think in some of the later tracks are also quite good. The issue is it's always at this weird counterbalance between being very, very good and probably the best songs in their catalog to just having a bunch of tracks I just do not care even a little bit about. And that's sort of the weird thing with Big Star. 
they have some of these really just show stopping, just utterly killer tracks. But they're like, they really are like a pop band where they have the great singles, like these great tracks that you will take with you. But then they have so much fluff on these records that just totally ruin them for it. I think it's really decent and I have it at three stars and it could probably grow with me with more listening. But I just, this is an issue that I just have with the band in general. I don't think that they are consistently great. They're consistently fine. And whenever they are great, they're one of the best bands of the 70s, but it's like an eighth of their catalog that I think reaches that. And I don't know, I struggle with power pop in general, but something about them in particular, I don't know. I want to like them more, but I just struggle to. Yeah, you know, I, I will admit, you know, like when I first heard them, you know, I was around your age. They didn't do much to me, honestly. But, you know, they give it a couple, few years, you know, maybe you'll be seeing a different thing. But um, also, I'd like to note to the audience that, uh, like two co-hosts here are much younger than I am. So uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's why our takes are bad, I guess. Um, but yeah, my number that's two. That's why they're better. Nah, don't know what I'm I agree gig. with that. My number two is going to be number one record, their debut. Um, I think it's just a strong album throughout. It just it lays out their kind of ethos, their their mentality as a band really well. Um, I just, you know, I think not all the songs are like amazing, but I think it's just solid all the way through. Um, a 13 is really good. I like uh, In the Street a lot. I think The Ballad of El Gudo is probably in my top two for them, uh, maybe top three songs. Um, but yeah, I just think, you know, it, it just, I agree with with the exception of my number one uh, on this list. I don't think their albums are very cohesive, um, but I think on this one, it doesn't matter as much as it did on Radio City for me because it kind of it's their first one, so it's it's more of a it's more of a statement from beginning to end, I guess. Um, but yeah, so. I did, yeah, I didn't have a problem with the India song, but it was kind of neat, you know, it sounded different, but it wasn't like, it didn't like that or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give this one four out of five. So uh, my number two album, again, a five. Like I said, um, ask me another week, the order of the top three could be different. But um, Absurd is my second favorite Pixar album. But it sometimes it is a one for me, depending. Uh, how I'm feeling, but uh, it's a five out of five for me, of course. But um, it's worth noting at no point was this ever considered a big star album. It's just kind of was like an art project, sort of, of Alex Tilden and Jody Stevens. And then they just kind of, the record company released it as um, big star because like they already started to have like a cult following by that time. And there's no official track listing for this. So it's a bit confusing trying to listen to this, but. I went with like the standard track listing, which is what I've always known. But um, yeah, it's an, I've never heard another album like this. You know, it's kind of like the con, it, there is a concept behind this. And it's kind of like a, an attempt to just catalog like this complete disorder and chaos when it's encountered in like someone's personal life. And that kind of, it's a very, um, very dark album, I think. And you know, as much as you like to, as we like to be told in music that like everything's happy and the world is good, but you know, let's face it, sometimes it's not. Sometimes everything does end up being a total disaster. And sometimes you know, everything does go wrong, and you're you're forced like really confront like yourself in like the darkest moments of your life. And you know that I like that this album goes there. You know, and the songs are very strong. Um, it veers between really, um, really dark personal stuff to like very like almost like just like <laughs> I'm sort of losing it, you know. It's very chaotic at times, so it veers between those two extremes. We have "Stroke It Noel." I really like that song. Really nice. Um, I like the chamber sound. 
Uh, For You, it's a nice little song sung by Jody Stevens. I like it when he sings. Um, His and Me, pretty, pretty good song. Um, you can't have me. I, I will admit not all the songs are like a tier material. Some of them, you know, are kind of, but I like listening to them when they're playing. You know, that's good enough for me. Uh, Nighttime, really great song. The acoustic songs on here tend to be my favorite. Um, Blue Moon, another good one. Take Care. Jesus Christ. I, <laughs> I just love how it's like random, a song about like a Christmas song pretty much goes up in the middle of this. Um, Femme Fatale is a good cover. Um, honestly, every cover I've heard of this song is pretty good, in my opinion. I don't understand why Adrian hates it so much. Her taste tends to be very arbitrary at times, notice, <laughs> noticeably. I seem to notice, especially when subtlety is involved in the in like the overall tone of the album. Um, my favorite song on this album, though, is Big Bat Black Car. Because it really sums up the terror <laughs> and just like of that moment when you do decide like, to just throw down the towel and he was like, I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> Everything is totally fucked. And that song just like really captures that well. There's a really strong vocal performance by Alex Tilton. And over and in these moments where it gets so vulnerable, there's just like such a majesty that comes in into like the arrangements, especially when Jody even comes in on the drums. It really turns like something really dark to like something strangely triumphant somehow. It's just I don't. I, it's like a mystery to me how they managed to do that, but I. It's, that's what really draws me to this album, and Holocaust again is just a really, really. It's a, it's a tough song emotionally, but it's very beautiful in a very, in a very sad way. And Kangaroo has some nice um, noise elements thrown into it. They're very um, a bit more avant garde. And Thank You Friends is kind of very sarcastic, ironic way to close the album. But um, you know, this album's got me through a lot of really difficult times in my life, and it's something I really. It's very soothing to listen to in like times of great stress that I that I encounter. It's kind of become my go-to dysphoria album, <laughs> to be honest. But you know, it's. I admit I have to be in the mood for this just because it's so. It's it's just so heavy, and like its vibe and stuff that I can't just put it on all the time. But it's really it's a very good album. I really enjoy it. Five out of five for third. Well, I'm sorry I have to go back and shit on these albums because that's my number two. And I think you had a great thesis review for somebody who enjoys this record. I don't. It's decent. It's also three stars for me. And it's a really interesting album to discuss because, like you mentioned, it really isn't that much of a big star album. And I'd argue it's kind of awkward as even a record general. Stroke It Null is good, but I started to get worried that it was going to have my initial effect to Radio City, in which the opener's interesting, it's cool, but the rest of the songs were just kind of okay. But then For You is really good, and Kiss of Me is really good, about, maybe among the best in the catalog. And You Can't, you can't Have Me, it, it's all right, it's a solid enough track, but then you get to Nighttime, which is maybe the best Big Star song in general for me. I tend to prefer whenever they strip it back and they go for this sort of softer ballad tone. So I feel like that's what they're good at. And I don't know, I just think that that's their prime and that's what they should offer and go to more. It's just beautiful in the composition and the, and the performances there. And then you get to Blue Moon, which is pretty solidly a step down from there, but still is good. I think Take Care and Jesus Christ, however, are both really good songs. I've said it before, I really don't like this cover of Femme Fatale. I don't see how Steph likes covers of Femme Fatale. I think that this song is so dependent upon Nico and the counterbalance she has with the Velvet Underground that it really just builds into a beauty in that song that I just can't get enough of. It's maybe my favorite song on Velvet Underground and Nico, and I'd say it's a pretty strong contender for like one of my favorite songs overall. Velvet Underground and Nico is just spectacular. You should have done them. 
Um, the backing vocals really annoy me on the film Fatale cover as well. I just don't think that they work very well at all blended with who I'm assuming is Chilton singing, who I also just think has a really awkward delivery through the track. I'm sorry, I'm just going to rant about how much I hate this cover now. But moving forward from there, I think a lot of the songs that come after it just aren't nearly as good as the songs in the first half. I like most of them better than a lot of the songs that I don't think are highlights on Radio City, but I have no urge to really return to them except for Thank You Friends, which is obviously great. The record is very hit or miss, and like I said, that's an issue with most of their albums. However, when it's good, it's among the band's best, like Radio City, but there's enough there that drop it to three stars, like I said before. I want to like this one more, because I think it has such an interesting concept and really does bring the struggle of a band that just can't continue anymore because of how unsuccessful they are. I think it's a really interesting plot thread through the record. I wish that the record was better, so I would have wanted to buy it at the time and support them, though. I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess I guess we're all three going to talk about it in a row because we now get to my number one, which is um, third. Um, yeah, I just think it's the sound of a, of like a band in in kind of collapse, but I think ironically it kind of leads it to be I think far and away their most cohesive album because you get that sense on almost all of the tracks where I feel like a lot of the songs on number one record in Radio City, you could kind of shuffle them one to the other and it wouldn't actually impact like the vibe that much, I don't think. Um, but I think on this one, everything is like from the session and it's like, it, it just feels more cohesive as a whole. Um, but yeah, I'd, out of all these songs, I'd only heard Jesus Christ before or because I'd heard, I heard the Monkees version on one of their albums. I think the Big Star original is much better. Um, I just have to say, I think it's my favorite on this album. Um, but yeah, glad I, yeah, glad I, um, glad I listened to this one. Um, yeah, that's my favorite. But I like, I like it all the way through. You know, I think, um, I think Holocaust is really good. Um, I gotta disagree with Adrian again. I think Femme Fatale is really good. Their version. Um, I think I think the cool thing about it that I really like is that it's not is that somehow it conjures like a similar vibe for me to the original, despite having like very different elements. But, but I you know, kind of get the same feeling when I'm listening to it of kind of this very pretty song that's also distant, but its distance is part of its effect on you. Um, but yeah, I mean, Femme Fatale is probably my favorite Velvet Underground song. so. To, to say that I appreciate this cover is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly good achievement from them. So, um, but yeah, it's, you know, my number one, I think, I think there's more to sink your teeth into here than on their first two albums. Um, and yeah, I'm going to give this one four and a half out of five. Ooh, first discography we've done where you don't get to five stars. Glad it was this one. <laughs> I do want to say, uh, Jesus Christ is probably my favorite Christmas song ever. Just, uh, you know, I like it. Yeah, it's one of the best. All right, on to my number one. I'm saying uh, no one could see coming from a mile, a million miles away. Radio City. <laughs> my favorite big star album. Um, I don't know. I love this album. This is, again, this is one of my, uh, in my top ten albums ever. Um. As far as guitar playing goes, I think this is my favorite. This has my favorite recorded guitar sound production-wise of any album I've ever heard. And Adrian is uh, is looking on in dismay because uh, I don't know. She's uh, I don't know. She's rather uncultured <laughs> in her musical opinion. I am the culture. Don't... Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, don't listen to them. Listen to me. I'm the one. I'm old enough to vote here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um joking yeah aside, i can vote now i wouldn't i wouldn't say that you know give me a month dave clark's gonna be a elected president of the united states now but um uh I'm, this is all jokes aside you know but um yeah i love this album the guitar sounds really great production is just fantastic um 
I like I Chris Bell is like the one who created the sound, but I will say I think um his solo work, Chris Bell's solo work is kind of stronger and more uh, is where he really hit his stride compared to like his stuff on number one record. But um Alex Chilton is my favorite member of this band because um his guitar playing is just really, really good. Um just great musician excellent singer i've always loved how his voice is he doesn't go for like a very masculine sound like robert plant or like um eric carmen from the raspberries he's got kind of like an androgynous quality to his voice and like a i don't know i get like uh he kind of has a very feminine way of singing you know i really like that he's got a very pretty voice um and the songs are really great and the performances are just phenomenal Oh, I, the arrangements are so good, and I love Jody Stevens drumming. His fills have had so much power to it. It's just like, oh man, it just gives it gives me life, you know. And oh my soul is really good record. Re- or a good opener, it really rocks. I love Life Is White. It has so much tension in the composition, and the way it's constructed is like, um, it's very experimental in very subtle ways, like um, the way uh certain chords are played in the middle and um overall the very the structure of the song is very similar to classical music um the way the songs are written on here are very epic and like form you have lots of sections lots of chord very complicated harmonies going on reminds me a bit of like a composer like handle or something and uh way out west good song i love i don't know i love the melodies on here and the chords especially sounds really rich or whatever. Lots of sink your teeth into from a musician's perspective. And um, that p- composition and songwriting plays a large part in how I rate stuff and what I come back to listen to personally, which is why I really like Big Star a lot. And uh, What's Going On, really pretty song. You get kind of the beginnings of... Um, there's a bit of a narrative thread in the tones, the albums from the first three. Because the first one's very optimistic. The second one, the cracks are starting to kind of appear. And then the third one, everything collapses. But uh, on Radio City, Radio City kind of addresses that feeling of like when you graduate high school. And you're just kind of going nowhere for a couple of years and everything's just kind of a, a bit melancholy is kind of starting to creep into your everyday life. And this album really captures that feeling well. Probably why I connected with Big Star because I listened to this stuff at that time in my life, and it just really, really connected with me personally. And um, I love Back of a Car, really solid tune about the same thing I just explained pretty much. And my favorite track on the album is Daisy Glaze, a really magnificent miniature epic, as if it was like done by like the Beatles, and, like the the rubber soul era or something um it's just like i don't know what the song changes up it starts out with like a very almost like narcotic vibe as though there's sleep walking very ethereal and then in the middle you get that um jody stevens comes in and then it just transforms into like something re- i don't know i just get like i love when music becomes larger and than life and has like an epic feel to it and uh this album is like it's amazing how uh, three musicians can make such a big massive sound you know it's it's, these songs just really lift up the ground when they the three of them click and september girls classic song really pretty tune guitar sounds really nice and jangly great pop song uh morpha two i like it nice little piano song and uh, I'm in love with the girl. It's kind of like a Buddy Holly style way to close the album. It's very simple, but it's sweet. And uh, yeah, Radio City is one of my favorite albums ever made. And one of the best albums I've listened to in my experience as a music listener. And uh, I didn't like it when I first heard it. Honestly, I would have given it the same rating Adrian probably was going to get it when I first heard it. But um, it's become one of my favorites over time. Radio City, five out of five, my number one. Yeah, it's 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 interesting that you mentioned that like he has like a more feminine way of singing because like when he was with the box tops, he had the most like gruff, 
you it's, know, like it's, 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 macho it's, voice imaginable. Yeah. It, for it's some, kind of funny. Somehow, as he got older, he sounded younger. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he reversed the aging <laughs> process. I don't know how he managed that, but yeah. He's like Benjamin Button. Well, I gotta say, this whole, uh, this whole episode to me, this whole thing of Steph's reviews, I feel like I finally understand how you two felt when I, when I talked about Pendulum. Because I don't understand what you're talking about at all. I don't see any of this. I think that they are perfectly fine in, in the absolute hierarchy of 70s rock music. They don't even come close to the top. And they have one album that I'm just going to say, they have one great record that very blatantly overshadows the rest of their stuff. And it's their number one record. I was going into this with a much more, I was expecting a lot of power pop. And boy, I was so happy whenever I heard that went a little bit harder onto folk rock and more acoustic instrumentation. Because I love my music as wimpy and as quiet as you can get it. And while it doesn't stay on this record, when it's there, it is just magnificent. I think that this record has some absolutely amazing cuts on it. I think that feel is an amazing opener and I just, and I think that all of those first five tracks are really great with 13 being bringing a pretty blatant standout for me. However, it does tend to lull a little bit afterwards and it doesn't pick up again until my wife is right and giving me another chance, which are both quite good. And the songs to close out the record are pretty solid as well. It kind of tosses me around in my interests. However, I can't disagree about how impressive a lot of this is and how I do think a lot of these songs are quite good even if they don't even if they don't fully grip me in the way that some other stuff on their previous records do. On my first second listen I'm probably going to give it three and a half. It's a very good album. It has a lot of high highs. I just do not see the hype of this being like one of the best albums of the 70s or the best album of 72. Uh, I don't know. I struggle with power pop as a whole. It's just not a genre that tends to excite me for a full record. And I kind of knew it going into this, but I, I was still expecting a little bit more. Um, I'm glad that you two are able to appreciate them in the way that I was able to. Yeah, I mean, I'll say, I think Big Star are, are like slightly overrated. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not as high on them as a lot of people seem to be. Although on the other hand, I don't think they're that well known. Like I think they're underrated by 95% of the populace and overrated by the remaining 5%. It's one of those cases, you know. They're overrated within the music community, but you wouldn't have any clue that they were outside of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. At least you're on our side. Well, you know, I should have known better than taking this band, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's I, mean, I, I still gave them four I, and a half. It didn't well, seem to enjoy it. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah. Like a four and a half is not bad. I enjoyed Ruining in Space. I, I can comfortably say Lost oh, in yeah, Space yeah. by Amy Mann is better. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. You damn well shouldn't. But, um, so, so we're in agreement. Love Revolution is their best song, right? Uh, get out of my, get off of my podcast. That was our, that was our final decision, right? I don't like kick you from the call. Uh, well, it's at least you liked a couple songs. At least I honestly, I Big Star are like a classic example of a grower band. You know, they take it takes a lot of time. You know, like really get the appeal of them. But once you do, you know, it's I don't know. They're in my musical DNA for good. I gotta say, I was much lower on them before too. I did that we listened to the classic run really propelled things. I wanted to give number one record four stars, but those last two songs just aren't that good. I, it's right on the edge. We should do, we should do a follow up to this in a few years and see how we feel about it again, especially since it's such a short discography too. Um, as long as we I don't include it. in space, I will be happy. We can include a random Crystal Soul record instead. Let's. We don't talk about in space here. I'm never going to talk about in space. Yeah. I'm good with pretending you do. Yeah. 
I'll talk about Lenny Kravitz's love revolution instead. All righty. Well, All right. I figure I'll let the cat out of the bag for our next artist. We are going to be covering Buddy Holly. Three studio albums, really interesting artist. I know basically nothing of 50s music going into it. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to really dig my teeth into it. Well, already, hopefully you have the same enthusiasm Steph had towards Big Star, or you're on the side of sanity with me. With that being said... Uh, yeah, in the Power middle, Pop. like me. With that being said, Power Pop sucks. I hope you all have a great night, and we will catch you next week for Buddy Holly. See ya.